I made this amazing mid-century modern clock as a birthday gift for my sister. I fell in love with the process of making it so much, I decided to make two more with totally different approaches, but still the modern look. But before you get to see those in detail, let me show you how I designed my sisters. Now gift giving is hard and I've struggled with this over the years. The solution I've discovered is to make stuff and that's honestly partly why I started this channel. For my sister's clock, I needed to start with an idea, something to build from. And for this, Google and Pinterest are my best friends. I found this image of a simple and elegant clock design that really spoke to me. So I opened up Inkscape and I got started on creating my own version of the design. Now they used just a kind of black outline where the tick marks are were gonna be, but I didn't like that, so I wanted to create a full pocket that I would then lay in a contrasting color veneer into to really stand out. The simple design could have been enough, but I don't know, the, the canvas just felt empty to me, like it was yearning for something more. So my mind began to wander to things that I know my sister cares about. And there's a lot to choose from, but ultimately I settled on her habit of doodling. She could cover a page in a flat forest, this kind of ferns and plants, it was really quite beautiful. And so I went online, found some images that matched the aesthetic that she would draw with, uh, imported them into Inkscape and laid them out along the clock face. Uh, now they were kind of floating there, so I grounded them on a tiny little grass covered planet that encircled the mounting point. And this really finished the design. Now, just to make it. After I pressed those hands under the finished clock, it was clear to me I had more to make. And the clock mechanism itself came in a pack of three after all. Giving her the gift was gonna have to wait. I had two more clocks to make. Inspiration came the same way as before. I found some reference images online and I got to work building up my own versions. The first is a geometric bursting star where each cast ray represents one of the numbers on the clock face. And the third design is a repeating pattern of cubes that uses the same inlaid veneer technique as the first clock, but it's using it now to create this really cool three-dimensional effect. It's quite the trio of clocks, so uh, let's go make them.
engraving all the pockets for the veneers to sit in took a really long time and it generated a ton of soot and particulate that just covered the surface of the clock. And the easiest way to get rid of this is actually just to clean it. So I had a toothbrush, throw it in the sink, and I just cleaned it off. Um, and this is gonna do double duty because removing that top surface of the veneer actually resulted in the clock curving, um, which isn't great. <laughs> um, but I was going to see my sister for a week to give her the gift. So in the meantime, I was gonna clamp up the wet clock and as it dried over the week, it would hopefully retain its flat shape again. After taking my first flight since the pandemic began, it was time to give my sister her clock and, and she absolutely loved it. Uh, she really loved the style of it, the plants, and her home is actually styled in a mid-century modern look, just like the clock is, so it fit right in. And she found a place on this table with some of its, uh, its own modern people um, and uh, I'm really proud of this gift. Now, unfortunately, when I got home, my tactic to restore the flatness of the clock was totally unsuccessful. It was still curved, and, and if anything, it was more curved than it was before. So that didn't work, but I figured let's keep on. Um, if I glue in the veneer pieces, I'm gonna be clamping it flat again for that glue to dry, and it's possible that with replacing that top layer of wood, it was going to retain the flatness again. So. After hours and hours of painstakingly gluing them in, um, it came out. It's still a little curved, but it's definitely flat enough. And most importantly, it's incredibly beautiful. And uh, as the clock hands spin around, there's gonna be no contact or anything. So I call this success. <laughs> and here we are, three finished mid-century modern clocks. One of them is already at my sister's house. And these are the other two, and they're gonna be hung up on my wall until one of you wants to hang it up on yours. There's only one of each, uh, and I'm gonna be putting them for sale on my Etsy shop. There'll be a link down in the description below if you're interested in purchasing them. My favorite aspect of my sister's clock is actually the engraved plants, because when you're far away from the clock, they kind of disappear, but when you come closer, they reveal themselves, and I think it's a really beautiful effect. And then we've got Starburst. That's the name of this one. It's so simple in its design and construction, and yet so elegant. I really love that. Of course, you're always gonna find little nitpicky flaws. You know, I do wish I made the central circle a little bit larger, that way you could see more of the white plastic and, uh, and better hide the clock mechanism on the backside. Um, but you live and you learn. And finally, we've got Kistler. That's the name of this one. And this one was way more time consuming than I thought it was gonna be, but it paid off and I think you'll agree that it's quite beautiful. Now, Mark Kistler is actually an artist that came to my kindergarten class, believe it or not, and he taught us all how to draw whatever we could imagine. And it was the style that I kind of settled on from his instruction that I still doodle with today. So I'll usually draw kind of repeating patterns of cubes and soaring geometric towers. I don't know, it's just, it, it, it's what I like. Thank you, Mark Kistler for continuing to inspire me to this day. Um, you've had a great impact on a lot of people. If you're interested at all in seeing any of his work or his art, um, I'll include a link to his channel down below. Overall, I almost love these more pieces of art than I do his clocks. You know, again, it's another nitpicky detail, but the wooden clock hands can fade into the wooden background a little bit. Um, but this goes to show that projects aren't failures just because they have a mistake. They can still come out incredibly beautiful and hang on your wall. So I hope uh, seeing me make these has inspired you to make some really cool gifts for your loved ones. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. Go make cool stuff.